Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before. The City Dio tour that you're about to watch is a repost of a video I uploaded about five months ago. In the past five months, our subscriber count has more than doubled, so it's very likely that many of you haven't had a chance to see this video. I'm also posting it because my friends and I created this Dio for a fake toy ad that is included in my comic book Drop Shadow, Graphic Design Vigilante. We just launched a Kickstarter to fund a small print run of this comic about a week ago, and we've already passed more than 80% of our funding goal. So thank you so much to everyone that has been supporting and sharing the campaign. It is greatly appreciated. If you're a fan of this channel and you want to show your support, now is the perfect time to do it. Now, let's watch this video, shall we? First up, let's look at how this was made. Obviously, on the left is the two-story NECA building facade, and that's resting on a street made of thin styrofoam sheets. We just spray painted those black and the porous styrofoam gives it a good asphalt looking texture. There's a lot of trash and debris scattered about. The dumpster and the trash cans are from Galactic Geeks collection. I made the trash bags by cutting squares out of a normal human size black trash bag and then tying the corners of those squares together to make a little bag shape. And I made the pallets from uh, little balsa wood paint stir sticks and hot glue. The fence is from a roll of gardening mesh that we spray painted silver and we use plastic straws to look like fence posts. The street signs are also plastic straws. And the gray and red brick walls were made by Galactic Geek from sheets of foam. He did a great job making those walls. And I made the curtains for these windows from a bit of fabric I picked up at Walmart. I just cut them to size and folded them and strung them on paper clips. And now with light behind them, it kind of brings the building to life a little bit. Now most of the background here is uh, resting on folding tables. The black backdrop is just hanging bed sheets, but the black fabric on the tables is a material called duvetine. It's used in film and theater. It, it doesn't reflect any light. It stays deep dark black, so it's great for photography, but it's very expensive, hence the reason we didn't do the entire backdrop in that material. We have two different types of buildings here. We have the flat ones that are meant to be deep background, and the ones in the front are three-dimensional with windows, and they're lit from within. The buildings are all made from cardboard and hot glue. The yellow windows are just sheets of lined yellow legal paper. And on the tables filling out the background, we have layers of kids' toy cranes and trucks that are all mostly Goodwill finds. They're all different scales, but once you kind of pepper them around, it doesn't really look that noticeable. We did give the cranes and the trucks a spray paint dusting to, to make, um, make them look like less bright, plasticky kids' toys. And then we hit all this background stuff with this purpley colored light, the idea being that Casting this color on the background would sort of separate it all from the foreground and kind of further em emphasize the force perspective we have going on there with the varying scales of trucks and buildings. And you can see we have a lot of lights set up to make all of this work, some strong directional overhead light and a big soft box in the front combined with a few bright spotlights and some small lights tucked back in the inside the set itself. Now let's look at the figures. Up first is our main character Drop Shadow, the graphic design vigilante who protects Canvas City from bad design. He's standing up here next to one of his arch enemies, Typeface. Drop Shadow is using pieces from Marvel Legends Killmonger and Gambit, and Typeface is clearly the Joe Fixit body with a custom made typewriter, typewriter head that was made from sculpting clay, an old zipper, and a hair clip. Now we move on to Comic Sans, the jester of JPEGs, and the idea here is that he's defacing a water tower. Uh, the gag being that like Comic Sans is a very cringeworthy font, and it's frequently found on water towers in the real world. That water tower tank is made from an old cat food container, uh, like one of those gravity feeder bowls. Now moving on over to Drop Shadow's plucky sidekick, Solid Stroke made mostly from a Jazzwares abstract figure from Fortnite. And the idea is that he's surfing on a wave of airbrush paint. The wave is made from a base piece of cardboard that was covered with strings of hot glue and painted. Kind of silly looking, but it turned out pretty decent for what it is. Now down here we have the secret identities of Drop Shadow and Solid Stroke. This is Matt Finish and Phil Stroke. The bodies are TVA Loki and The Hood. The Drop Shadow logos on the wall are stickers I had printed. And next to these guys is Heather Gray, the colorblind cat burglar. She's made with a Black Widow body and a Spider Woman head. And next to her is Comic Sans' funny car, made from a Snyder Batmobile, also found at Goodwill. And then finally, this group is meant to be Drop Shadow's B-list villains. We have the Query, who is essentially like a flamboyantly gay Riddler. 
uh, in the middle is flash. The idea being that the program flash is uh, outdated, uh, hence the wheelchair and the sort of decrepit nature of him. The query and flash represent UI, UX, and web design. Not every character is exclusively graphic design themed. And to the right of them is a very stupid character named Mr. Bees. Uh, and his thing is that he's a former font designer who now only uses the letter B. And he uses his gun to shoot swarms of killer bees. So he's not like a very fleshed out character. We just thought it was funny that Mr. Bees, it sounds like Mr. Freeze, but obviously it's a much dumber gimmick than that. It's, we're kind of just having some fun uh, with, with some of these stupid characters here. And once we put this dio and these custom figures together, we needed to photograph them. And I'll show you just how particular we are about getting the right results. We tried using three different cameras to see which one turned out the best. First up was the iPhone, which turned out pretty great. In some ways, this was the best photo. But it wasn't the perfect choice for the comic, the toy ad. Uh, you can see we tried pumping some smoke in, but to my eyes, it was just the smoke was kind of distracting and obscuring the figures a bit too much. Next up was a Canon 60D. I like how this has a more vintage feel. To me, it has the most authentic 80s, 90s kind of vibe with the deep blacks and the yellow kind of cast on it. But the one we ended up using for the book was shot on a Panasonic GH4. And for me, this one just had the most clarity. It, it was easy to see each character very clearly, and I think it was the best angle. I like how the background recedes behind the figures. You can see through to like the interstate sign down there. And then I'll give you a little sneak peek at how the final print ad is going to look. I'm really stoked about how this came out. I'm looking forward to sharing more Drops Shadow stuff with you guys as we get closer to finishing the comic. So stay tuned for more information about that. Thank you for joining me on this City Dio tour. I will catch you all next time. Bye.